Was there a part of, in retrospect, where for her growing up in the shadow of mom and dad are building a 90,000 square foot home, there's a documentary on it, and growing up in that environment, was that a hard thing for her? Or at the time, did you, did you realize it was difficult for her? Oh, that was um, very difficult for her. She didn't want anyone to know that she came from a wealthy family. She wanted to fit in and when wind came out, or, uh, like wind of um, building the largest home in America and through the movie, um, she started getting bullied at school and people were being her friends for the wrong reasons. We got, like, you have money, you need to buy us the drugs and things like that. And, and I think she um, kind of started doing drugs to kind of fit in. Looking back, like mm. it's, there were so many signs that I wish that my husband and I were savvy to and that we knew. I wish someone had told us about these signs. And Could you share a few of those just so mm -hmm. that maybe a parent out there watching right now can right. avoid so, this same situation? I'm, there's um, like signs like um, maybe a change of friends, the types of people that they're hang, hanging out with, um, showing lack of interest in, in things that they've always enjoyed, uh, skipping school. And uh, there's so many more locking themselves in, in their bedroom saying that they're tired. You know, they could be in there doing drugs or maybe they're coming down from something and they don't want you to notice and they kind of camouflage tiredness with being on the drugs. And obviously you're trying to share the story of your daughter to hopefully prevent this from happening to anyone else out there and, and a lot of red flags. Where, where do you and your husband go from here? When our daughter passed away, we did go through like a, a, a mourning period where we didn't just didn't know what to do. Um, we kind of um, be, became recluses and, and um, start, tried to, you know, I tried not to get depressed or blame myself and things like that. Um, so about three months after um, our daughter passed away, we finally regrouped and became stronger together, and we went straight to Washington, D.C., met with the DEA, and we were able to get a CARA Act passed that was sitting on the shelf for three years, which is a very comprehensive act. But one of it, one part of it is to get the um, naloxone, the funding for naloxone to be provided in all the police cars and first responders across the country. And for our viewers, that's the medication you can give right at the time of an overdose to save someone. So yes, I think it, that's really accurate. It blocks the, recept the brain receptors from getting the opioids. And um, I know in Orlando where we live, it's already implemented and the sheriff told me that they've used it over a thousand times and that helps us with our grieving, knowing that we've saved those lives. And we've obviously covered this epidemic with so much scrutiny on this show. And I cannot even imagine what life must have been like for Ricky going through all of these difficult times and, and being in the shadow of the documentary and all the pressure she felt. And I, I just don't want anyone to lose sight of that. Um, the book that Jackie wrote basically using Vicky's journal, it's called Victoria's Voice. And everyone in the audience is going to go home with a copy. And, and, and if everyone would just sit, sit back down, I don't normally do this, but I'd just love for all of us just to take a moment of silence in, in Ricky's honor. Jackie, thank you. Thank you. That, that gives me chills. I feel that she's here.